coming up on Cronkite News. The Arizona House is looking at a bill that could change how our state funds education. We'll explain what the impact could be to rural communities if passed. Plus, we're taking a look at how Arizona businesses adapted during the coronavirus pandemic and how those changes may stick after it's over. And later on Break It Down, the struggles of people of color who are LGBTQ when it comes to health care inequities. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Raina Preciado. And I'm Mitchell Zimmerman. Thank you for joining us. A bill passed out of the House Appropriations Committee that would change the funding structure for K-12 schools in Arizona. Senate Bill 1269 brings up debate about school funding and what's fair for parents and students versus what's fair for the school districts. Cronkite News reporter Nick Shesky explains some of the changes. Under the current legislation, the amount of funding schools get from the state can range per student by thousands of dollars. One goal of the new legislation is to equalize the funding schools receive per student. This system has created a system where students are valued at different amounts based simply on where they attend a school. Taxpayers, taxpayers and parents are taxed at vastly different rates irrespective of where their student attends and allows many of those dollars to stay at the campus regardless if that student chooses to leave that campus. While equalizing each student's worth seems fair, not all schools in the state are the same. The proposed funding formula could really hurt rural school district budgets. Bowie Unified School District is a district with 17 staff members and around 70 students. Dan Erickson, the superintendent and principal, explains why he believes this new bill is harmful to his school and all rural schools. I would love to say that a kid is a kid is a kid, but it doesn't cost the same to educate a kid in a rural school as it does to educate a kid in a city school. The current proposal would cut Bowie's state funding by about 12 percent. Small districts like Bowie can have students from multiple grades all in the same classroom under one teacher. We have uh, like nine kids in one grade and four kids in another. So we're uh, grouping uh, multi-grades together and trying to uh, provide the same kind of programs they provide a large district. Some experts argue that the current formula was designed to give more money to rural school districts and has no need of fixing. The formula is working. If they're complaining that some of those small rural schools have too much money, which I don't believe they do, uh, but, but that's what the formula was designed to do. Um, because it does economies of scale, it costs more in a small rural district. In Phoenix, Nick Shesky, Cronkite News. There is discussion about a fix for rural schools, but no details have been unveiled yet. Next step, the bill goes before the full house for a vote. Today, the FDA approved a second COVID-19 booster shot for immunocompromised people and those 50 years old and up. Eligible groups can receive a booster of either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines. According to the FDA, the extra booster aims to further protect vulnerable members of the population in the case of another wave of COVID-19. Those eligible for the extra dose can receive it four months after their last shot. The second booster shot also applies to certain immunocompromised groups ages 12 and older. It's unclear how urgent the need for extra booster shots is, however. COVID-19 cases are currently dipping and not much evidence exists yet to tell how much extra help another booster shot could offer at this time. As many places around the country are throttling back on COVID-19 protocols, business owners continue to find new ways to stay in business. Ashley Hudjaleski takes a look at whether these new business methods are here to stay. When the pandemic first began, many business owners had to quickly adjust their work routines. Whether it was going from in-person meetings to strictly Zoom or gearing their restaurants for an influx in takeout and delivery orders. Honey Bear's barbecue owner, Mark Smith, says his business really had to pivot. A lot of people didn't know how to switch over from fine dining or dining in to deliveries and pickups. We did a lot of Grubhub, DoorDash, we did online ordering and, and, and stuff like that, and that is huge. Smith says his takeout business increased 130%, and he, like others, believes that new ways of doing business are here to stay. I don't think it's going back. I think we're finding a new reality in regards to how our economy is going to operate uh, from this point forward. Historically low unemployment rates means it's tough for businesses to find workers. But Arizona Small Business Association board member Frank Divers believes the end to this struggle could be soon. Statistics are, are starting to uh, reveal that it is beginning to trend back. 
people are being incentivized based on the fact that the market is making them offers that they are like, wow, I probably should consider that. Despite the many challenges COVID-19 brought, it taught all of us how to quickly adapt. As bad as the pandemic was, uh, it triggered the creative imagination of a lot of small business owners to start thinking, okay, well, if I can't do this, then what can I do? In the end, many businesses came out of the pandemic stronger with new tools they'll continue to use. In Phoenix, Ashley Hodjaleski, Cronkite News. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, during the pandemic, 56% of businesses experienced a decrease in demand for their products or services, and 19% closed due to government mandates. March 29, 1973 marks the last day American troops left Vietnam, essentially ending the Vietnam War. Today, the Department of Veterans Affairs and the National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona commemorated Vietnam service members. The event early this morning featured a private wreath laying, as well as the playing of taps, a bugle call to remember fallen soldiers. After the laying of the wreath and a gun salute, Randy Hurd, the director of the National Memorial Cemetery of Arizona, thanked Vietnam War veterans for their service and recognized that they don't get honored enough. They're a vital part of our history. They did not get the recognition, and in my opinion, they can never get enough recognition. They are loved, they are cherished, they are a vital part of our community. Former President Barack Obama proclaimed March 29th as Vietnam War Veterans Day in 2012. Former President Donald Trump made the day an official holiday in 2017 has certainly seen an uptick in housing prices within the last year. Up next, we'll talk about how housing prices in Phoenix compare to those in other cities. Also, a look at some of the clouds and other wet weather we've been seeing around the state next. What you get from Washington Week that you will not get anywhere else are the best and the brightest reporters from different media companies, and they're able to have a real conversation about things that are happening in Washington and around the country. But it's also a show about issues that are relevant to different communities. How do you think that As the moderator, I feel this deep responsibility to bring in those other perspectives so that people understand how power and politics impact their daily lives. Friday nights at 7 on Arizona PBS. Nationally, housing prices saw a rise to start off the year. And here in Arizona, one city saw the largest annual gain in the country. According to SNP CoreLogic Case Shiller Index, Phoenix led the way with the highest annual gain of more than 32%. This was followed by Tampa with a close to 31% increase and Miami with just over 28% increase. In comparison, home prices nationally rose just over 10, 19% over the last 12 months. According to Realtor.com, the median home listing price in Phoenix is $450,000. We're still cheaper than most of the you know, gateway cities, so we're, we're still less expensive than Southern California. And in that regard, it's considered to be a bargain. I think you know, the, there's two effects. One of them is a potential economic development effect, but the other, and I think equally, if not more important, is the social effect, because wages have not grown to the same rate. 16 out of the 20 listed cities in the report had an increase in housing prices. We woke up to some gray weather this morning with clouds rolling through the state. Some parts of the valley received over half an inch of rain in the past 24 hours. Let's take a look at the view from our newsroom balcony. Although many of us made our commute to work under dark rain clouds this morning, some sunshine broke through every once in a while throughout the day. The valley wasn't the only Arizona region to see some wet weather, though. 
Webcams from the Arizona Snowball Ski Resort in Flagstaff have shown that skiers have been in for a powdery surprise this week. The resort saw some snowfall over the last 24 hours, with steady winter weather continuing this afternoon. Andrea Villalobos joins us now with a look at the forecast for the rest of the week, including what this wet spell means for our daily temperatures. Good evening, Arizona. We have seen a pretty big shift from those 90s that we were looking at last week. As you can see, we had some beautiful rain here in the valley, and you can see that that storm system is continuing in tonight um, over the course of this evening as we come you home. In Flagstaff, you can see that storm system is still pretty strong up there, as well as in Safford and Wilcox, but you can see that that's going to be clearing out over the course of tomorrow, and we will see some cloud coverage as we are getting out of bed in the morning on Thursday around 630, getting to work, but you can see that will clear out as well by Thursday afternoon. And this is due in part to a low pressure system that we have coming in. It's going to be rolling over our state and it will be followed by a high pressure system. And what this system does is that it is going to end up clearing, excuse me, bringing our temperatures up a bit. So you can see that on Phoenix, we're going to be coming back up close to those 80s. And we'll see in Payson, 57 degrees, 53 in Flagstaff and Yuma over there will be at about 85 degrees. So as we come into taking a look at our week, we'll be at again 79 degrees here on Wednesday. We'll be at about 84 on Friday and coming in to that weekend, 87 degrees on Saturday and Sunday. We'll have also some clouds um, coming into that Sunday, but we will be rounding out the week on Wednesday back, unfortunately, at those 90s. So good thing we enjoyed that rain while it lasted. In the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Andrea Villalobos. I'm Marty Salvo. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. Natasha Adair takes over the ASU women's basketball program. Her plans to lead the Sun Devils next. Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. Our cutting edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons. Your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Every day I wake up, my first thought is how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches this, they say that I'm the greatest that they've ever seen. Here we go, lights up. Whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. Tell us what you think. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Marty Savov, and this is your Cronkite Sports Report. ASU women's basketball named Natasha Adair as their next head coach. She will follow in the footsteps of Charlie Turner Thorne, who led the team for 25 seasons. Cronkite News reporter Michael Garafa introduces us to the new head coach. Former University of Delaware women's basketball head coach Natasha Adair was named the next head coach of ASU women's basketball. She becomes the first black woman to lead the ASU women's basketball program. Adair was thrilled to get the call. You knew what you were getting here at ASU. The investment by all, the commitment by all. Um, this is a destination job. This is a job that's, that's for our student athlete, 
that promotes student athlete welfare. But ASU, when I stepped on campus, I, I, was, I was blown away. Adair brings over 20 years of coaching experience to Tempe. She capped her five years at Delaware with a conference title in 2021 and followed it with the team's first NCAA tournament appearance since 2013. She has big shoes to fill at ASU, succeeding Charlie Turner Thorne, who over 25 years became the winningest coach in ASU women's basketball history. It's something that's not going to happen overnight. It's a process. But I think as long as you, like Ray said, respect the past and understand, okay, this is where we are, but moving forward, it, it'll be Coach A's way. After a heartbreaking loss in the Pac-12 tournament and a 12-14 and season, Adair will try to lead ASU back to prominence, starting with getting them back to the NCAA tournament for the first time in two years. In Tempe, Michael Garaffa, Cronkite News. U Arizona men's basketball head coach Tommy Lloyd was named Coach of the Year today by the National Association of Basketball Coaches. Lloyd was also named Pac-12 Coach of the Year and is one of four finalists for the Naismith Coach of the Year Award. This award comes after an amazing season, finishing 33-4 and, and winning the Pac-12 tournament in Lloyd's first season with the team. They also clinched a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, but had their season cut short with a loss in the Sweet 16 to Houston last week. The Coyotes finished up a three, their three-game road trip in Edmonton last night as they lost 6-1 to one to the Oilers. This marks their sixth straight loss and officially eliminated the Coyotes from playoff contention, joining the Canadians as the only teams eliminated from the postseason. Coyotes head coach Andre Tourney spoke about the disappointing loss. Mentally, we were maybe a little bit tired, maybe a little bit off. Number of turnover tonight and uh, our execution was not sharp. Making plays was tough. We had a bad game. Coming off a year with multiple playoff overtime games, the NFL has made some big changes for next season. NFL owners voted to change overtime rules so that both teams are guaranteed a possession in overtime in playoff games. The regular season overtime rules remain unchanged. That's all for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Reyna. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Next on Break It Down, we examine the increase in healthcare inequalities within the black LGBTQ community.